Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Afternoon. Can we go afternoon too? Everyone stand up, please. to invite you all to a congregational social to gather congregational input for what you're looking for in your next pastor. The social will be June 26th, immediately following worship service. We'll fill out a survey, have snacks, and participate in a fun activity. This will also be the last day to submit your responses for the spiritual type exercise. If you're interested in participating with Sunday service, reading announcements or scripture, giving the call to generosity, greeting, setup, takedown, etc. There's another trading session scheduled this Saturday on June 4th at 1 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. See me after service if you have questions or want some more information. How many of you have missed one Sunday in the year 2022? <coughs> okay. You've noticed Sandra is always Okay. And she's got a couple of things coming up, including Kelly preaching and Kelly wanting her to be present with Kelly on Father's Day. So there's going to be some time we're going to need some help doing this and doing the other stuff that she does. So if you all can come next Saturday at 1 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. And if enough of us know how to do something, something might happen. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Let's continue with our worship service. Other things won't happen. <laughs> It's time to get rowdy now. Uh-oh, sound we're gonna sing a song called Friend of God.
And I apologize to anyone who knows sign language. I just was doing little bits that I know. I've always liked the idea that the sign for friend is interlocking fingers like this. Friend. On our prayer and praise sheet today, of course we want to continue to pray for those who are dealing with and having to care for those who have COVID. You may have noticed in the news that the rates are higher in Roanoke City and Roanoke County. Um, always feel free if you're not comfortable to wear a mask. If you feel better about that. We haven't had any directions from our host church on that situation. We continue to pray for the people in Ukraine as they continue to have their country battered and beaten and battered and beaten. And we could not talk today without talking about shooting in Texas. I told Sandra that I tend not to be really political from the pulpit. Folks, this has to stop. This has Amen. to stop. Amen. I have friends, even sitting in this room, that I know that have guns. And when I go to their house, I'll make sure they know I know they have guns and they know it's me coming in. <laughs> I'm not opposed to guns. I'm opposed to military weapons in civilians' hands. Amen. Amen. And I see no reason why those, why those weapons of mass destruction need to be anywhere except on a farm war field. I've sat with this all week thinking, what can we say? And, and we can't really say anything. The one thing we can do is vote. And vote. And vote. They used to say in Chicago, vote early and vote often. You know, we can't do that. But vote if you have anybody that you know that's not voting. Please get them out. Please get them out to do that. Um, the children, the children, not just those killed, not just the teachers killed, not just the husband who died of basically a broken heart, but there are 15 other children in the hospital who survived that horrific time and all the other students in that school. Remember Dolores Berry, I mentioned this in class last week when there was a shooting here, she said when one of us is shot, all of us. So whatever you can do, pray, put out the word to your friends to vote, whatever we can do. If you have young people or adults that you know are a little off base and they're acting a little off base, the old say something, do something, see something, say something, Please, I'm gonna, I just, everybody keeps saying this can't continue, but you know what? It does. I had one person tell me, an older person said, I'm afraid to even go out now. Mm -hmm. And I said, I understand that, but I'm not going to let that fear keep me in. It's going to make me mega alert. I don't go in a building that I don't know where the door is. My mother always sat with her back to the wall so she could see the door. And I tend to do that a lot too. But you know, the best thing we can do is stay prayed up, voted up, and tell the people around us that we love them. Because yeah. it might be the last time. Pat sent in an unspoken request. Some of you saw on Facebook, Rhonda's dog Sophie is having a horrible time. I haven't had any update this morning on that. This would be, I think, is this the only pet they have now? The last pet? Last dog. Last dog. Bonnie was woke up sick last night, so she, she and Patsy aren't here this morning. We were praying last week for Laura Brown's mother. They've discovered that she has a reoccurrence of breast cancer. And she also has a form of dementia that's very rapid. And so she has gone back to her facility with hospice. And if you would keep her and her children, while well, Laura has two brothers in your prayers, I know that I and Laura would really appreciate that. Other things you didn't get, praises or prayer requests? Didn't get to Kathy? Praises. Um, the, all the Fisher surgeries went well, pacemaker replacements, and uh, my sister's breast cancer surgery did end up only having to be a lumpectomy, for which we're very grateful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lori? My niece that was in a car accident, what was it, like three or four weeks ago, something like that, was in a coma. She's a nurse and went through all the COVID with ICU and all that stuff. Anyway, she actually went home this week oh. on a walker, but she's home, thank God. Oh, and my Aunt Rose is doing much better, thank goodness. Good, good. Anyone else? Isn't it cool when you get to hear the 
the rest of the story about things for uh, people for whom we pray. Absolutely. Let's pray. Loving God, I thank you today for a congregation that prays, for a congregation that cares, for a congregation that rejoices, for a congregation that will cry with us. I ask that you be with each of the situations we've mentioned here this morning. Think about those Sunday schools in Texas where those fourth graders won't be in their class. Think about the pews in their churches where there'll be gaps. And I ask that you bless those pastors, those ministers, and help them to have words of encouragement, of hope, and words of tears. Continue to be with this church as we grow, as we continue to follow you, as we continue to seek a new pastor, as we continue to find another place eventually. May this always be a place where people can come and be themselves. We can come with our tears and we can surely come with our laughter. Especially be with Laura and her family this morning, <coughs> with her mom. And all these things we give you thanks and praise. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Or afternoon, excuse me. So morning for me because I ain't been out of bed that long. <laughs> this is our part of service that nobody particularly likes to do, but it is a necessary part where we ask that you give, not only of your money, but of your time and of your love. So as the plate comes around, please give as you're able. And if you're only able to offer a prayer, please do so. Thank you.
And the glory forever, forever, Amen, read the scripture today, I want to tell you that next Sunday is Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And in some churches where we had many multilingual people, I would have different people speaking different languages. But I've become more and more convinced over the years that it was the ears that were willing to listen on that day. People heard what meant to them, what spoke to them. So it's something I've never done before. I'm going to ask as many as you as want, but I'm hoping for at least five, contact me this week private message, Facebook, whatever you want to do, if you're willing to give about two minutes, oh, Michael's not here, I don't have to say two minutes, two minutes, <laughs> tell how being a part of a church has changed your life or means something to you. How church has blessed you. You say, well, why aren't you talking about Jesus? We're talking about Jesus lots of times. But I want to know that the church had never been birthed. What has a, being in the church has meant to you? And it may be this church, it may be another church, but we're going to ask for at least five of you to contact me. And if you don't, I'll be contacting you Saturday. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Our scripture today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. And as I read this, you'll understand some of the music choices, I think, today. Jesus says, I'm praying not only for them, but for those who will believe in me because of them and their witness about me. The goal is for all of them to become one heart and mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so they might be one heart and mind with us. Then the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. The same glory you gave me, I give to them, so they'll be as unified and together as we are, I in them and you in me. Then they'll be mature in this oneness and give the godless world evidence that you sent me and loved them in the same way you've loved me. Father, I want those you gave me to be with me right where I am so they can see my glory, the splendor of, that you gave me, having loved me long before there ever was a world. Righteous Father, the world has never known you, but I have known you, and these disciples know that you sent me on this mission. I have made my very being known to them who you are and what you do and continue to make it known so that your love for me might be in them exactly as I am in them. How do you feel when somebody prays for you by name? Not just the sick and afflicted and those in distress. And friends, they always, they always just ended their blessing at the table every time. Uh, those sick and distressed on the sea, you know, I would add that little part in. But how does it feel when somebody prays for you specifically? It's one thing I love about our communion procedure here. How do you feel? Sometimes you may feel blessed. I saw, yeah, my little brain could come there. Make a symbol. Elizabeth, yes, thank you. You'll come. Some people may feel as if they are. Maybe a little embarrassed. I've had people say, how did you know to pray that for me? I haven't told anybody. Uh, well, somebody knew. <laughs> Some people may feel humble, encouraged. Some people may feel corrected. They may feel like they've done something wrong. I've seen this in churches where you know, they're going to pray the gay out of you. Let's just say it. <laughs> You know, where they're going to pray this or that out of you. 
They're going to have you down there praying on you to you speak in tongues, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not talking about that kind of prayer. I'm talking about when someone <coughs> sincerely from their heart prays for you. You know, it's amazing. My grandmother had 12 children and 50 grandchildren. And you hardly ever heard her call anybody's name the first time, at least, you know. <laughs> but every once in a while, I can remember her mentioning my name specifically. Wow. Can I give you a little chill there? Can I give you a little chill there? But here Jesus is praying this, and John's the only one that records this, at the Last Supper. It's the, his final blessing <coughs> on them, if you will. And he's praying for them. And I remember being a camp counselor, and one of the things we would always do with the kids was have them look at John 3.16. And have them say, for God so loved the world that God gave his only begotten son. I said, now do it this way. For God so loved Catherine that God gave his only begotten son. And you could see some of those girls, their eyes just, wow, it means me, specifically. And so this is one of the passages where I feel like Jesus prayed for us. Now, you know, you can say, well, what did Jesus know about me all that time ago? You know, Jesus knew people, honey. And there's nothing new under the sun, as Ecclesiastes says. But I believe Jesus had the ability to look down through the ages and see this group of 20 people sitting <coughs> on a Sunday afternoon in a church. Now, maybe, maybe you think that's a little bizarre to think that way, but... I feel like that Jesus knew those for whom he was praying at that time. I didn't bring my reading glasses and my printing is too small for myself. You know, who first told you? Besides who first prayed for you, who first told you that Jesus loved you? Who first told you? Some of us were blessed that we don't even remember the first time we heard it because our mother or dad or grandmother told us that from what was from birth. Some of us maybe didn't hear about it until much later. I'm sure my mother told me, but I remember my adopted grandmother, Mrs. Coon. I remember her telling me that, sitting on her lap. Some of us didn't hear that until much later because everybody convinced us that God could not love us for one reason or another. Jesus in this whole scripture puts no limitations. He doesn't say, and I'm in you unless you're of this political party. Or I'm in you unless you don't have this degree. Or I'm in you in case you're a different color. Or I'm in you if you're a different faith. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that at all. Instead, he says he prays for those who will believe in me because of their witness about me. The disciples. The disciples. There were a lot of people who heard about Jesus over the disciples, but it's mainly the disciples that we've gotten this word from. And Jesus knew that that word was going to spread. What faith Jesus had in his mission. He was looking at Golgotha just down the road there. But he knew that his message would continue. His message would spread. And the whole way through this, he wants us to have a unity. Now, I looked at one commentary that I have. And it went slightly berserk, berserk over ecumenicism. You know what that is when other churches come together and, and practice and like we're in a different church. And they, now this doesn't mean that. And I thought, I don't need this book anymore. We're doing the show. Jesus wants us to be one in spirit, one in intent, one in goal, one in heart. And a lot of us have been other churches that we may not agree with. But if the word's being preached truly, if Jesus is being lifted up, and I can find some affinity with that. Two of my friends in Charlotte this morning had to decide what to do for church. And they went to a Methodist church for early church. And bless their hearts. Then they went to a UCC for 11 o'clock church. I'm going to give them big gold stars on Facebook later, you know. But they were looking for an affinity place. A place where they found that they were welcome and that the message they would hear would be one they were used to hearing. And I believe Jesus in talking all this about one mind and one spirit, he knew things were going to splinter. You know, you get three people. Think about when you were kids. You had your best friend. And then somebody else came into the little group. Oh, no. Now we've got some conflict. You like her better. You like me. 
Yeah. You get to her house, you didn't come to my house. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe y'all didn't hear any of that, that stuff. Uh, Jesus knew there were going to be splinters. But he kept calling them back to unity. Because only as they could maintain some unity could they move forward. How many of you have been in a church that split? Anybody? Many of us have. When a church splits, there are three groups. There's a group that stays in that building, come blank or high water. And there's part that go off and they're going to do it right this time. And then there's this, the people in the middle. Many drop away, many scatter, many never go anywhere. Jesus knew it was going to happen. That's why he kept pounding on this unity, being unified, being together. And he tells them this, not just a matter of them sticking with it because Jesus said to. They're saying, God has stuck with me, Jesus, and God will stick with you. God will be that glue that pulls it all together. And I love how Jesus, when he says, I want those that you gave me to be with me right where I am. I don't think he meant on the road to Golgotha. I think he meant right secure in the hand of God. Trusting God with our very lives. Having that assurance. You know, there's some people I don't want to ride with when they're driving. Okay? I'm not naming any names because none of them are really in this room right now. But I have a friend in Charlotte, and if I didn't have but a tenth of a tank of gas, I'd drive. <laughs> because I knew it was not safe to be driving with her. I hope she's not listening today. Um, but there are other people I just trust. I just trust. I get in the car, I know I'm secure with them. I know their car doesn't have too many dings and nets, you know. Jesus is saying, I want those who come after me to feel the same security in God as I feel. Isn't it awful to feel insecure? To feel insecure in your job, insecure in your relationship, insecure maybe even in your neighborhood, your housing situation, your medical situation. That's when we have to find the solid rock. That's where we need to find that, that hand of God. You know, I, I tried to look up the words and I found them, but I didn't write them down. There was a song Cassie Culverwell, the woman's music, sang way back in the 80s. And she had a song called Cradle Me Jesus. And I think about that song so often times when things are crazy like they've been this week in our world. I just want to crawl up into the hands of Jesus and be cradled. Not held out here like this, I'm a screaming kid, they're going to do something else. But cradled, comforted. Jesus says, I want them to be where I am. I want them to having, they know that you've loved me since before there ever was a world. And that love hasn't run out. His disciples didn't quite understand the mission, but they knew Jesus was here for a purpose. And as we look back now, thanks to the Gospels and other writings, we know there was a purpose. And part of that purpose was for you and me. For you and me. I was listening to a speaker the other day on a book on CD, and he was talking about if this had never happened, that had never happened, and Jesus had never been thought of as God, and Christianity would have never developed, and all this stuff in the world. And I thought, I don't need to spend my time with that. I know what I believe. I know what I sense. I know what I know. And then it says that Jesus in this prayer actually told us that he had showed God that we existed. And he had showed us that God existed. I've made your very being known to them, who you are and what you do. I'm convinced if I spent the rest of my life studying nothing else other than to study what we know of the life of Jesus, that could take me a lifetime. You know, it's not that hard to read those four Gospels. I didn't say read us in study. Why did he do it? With whom did he do it? What was his point? Jesus says they're able to see why I was sent. We know in the scripture there's a couple different words used for, for God. The word father here. One of them is a father as in a male uh, patriarch, patria, patria, authority figure. But toward the end, one of the comments, commentaries on that said that he breaks into Abba. You know what Abba means? Daddy. Papa. 
that tender, personal connection. And he wanted to make sure that his disciples and those who would come next knew that there was a tender connection. Not a big iron fist, but a hand extended in love. You know, <coughs> one thing that I, I get tender about a lot of things now, I blame it on being old, but my bad just always work good. Um, one of the things that will bring me to tears quicker than anything is tears coming to life. It just takes me at least inside to my knees. I quite know why that is. But there's a certain amount of vulnerability in that. There's a certain amount of trust in that. There's a certain amount of, of care involved in that. I find it an honor to be able to pray with you all. And if there's a visitor that comes forth for communion, I don't know their name, I ask. Because I think it's important to have that connection. That connection. <coughs> and I do that not particularly because I like to be that up close and personal with people. But I pray for you by name because Jesus prayed for me by name. Sweet name. By name. And I believe Jesus still prays for us by name. So if you're ever at a time where you feel like nobody cares, go to garden eat worms. Nobody cares. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Go back here to John 17. And here, read out loud, hear Jesus praying for you. For you. Funny, when I saw my friends going to other churches this morning, I thought, what if they had communion? <laughs> what if the communion was like at that church? Partly because I don't know how much it means to those that have been there. One of the blessings to M of MCC to me is that I get to share in this meal with you every Sunday. It's offered every Sunday. You don't have to come every Sunday. Nobody's going to go, oh, I wonder what in the world the trouble they got to do this week. They wouldn't even come to communion. <laughs> heard people say that before. But it's offered a free meal, a free gift of love for those whom Jesus loves. As part of the scripture that we read today, part of that dinner, Jesus took bread from the table. He lifted it to heaven, he gave thanks for it, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And I believe in that moment he didn't just mean the disciples gathered there or the people gathered in that room. I think he had a cosmic view of who you is and you is us. <laughs> Take and eat of it and every time you eat of it, remember me. He took a cup from the table and he lifted it to heaven and he gave thanks for it and he blessed it and he said, this is my blood poured out for you as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of all sins. Take a drink of it, each of you, and when you do, remember me. And each week as we come to this table and we receive these gifts of God, these gifts of love from a God of pure love, we're reminded of the mystery of our faith that Christ has died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, and Christ, Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless these elements. May they be a reminder of us to us of a God who loved us from the beginning of creation and before, and a God who continues to love us today, no matter who we are, where we are, we are loved. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll be using the method of a tincture, the wafer dipped in juice. If you're not comfortable for that, please tell me and I'll give you one that you can take back to your seat. We want everyone to be healthy and to be comfortable. Come, Spirit Lance.